Hello, everyone. How are you? Hello to all my followers out there. Thank you so much for following. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you guys so much. If you'd like to put something in the comments below that uh, something you're interested in to learning more about, if you would like to put that in the comments, that would be great. That helps me to uh, you know, share content that you're really interested in. Okay. So if I'm kind of just, um, you know, doing whatever I want to share, but it's more interesting when I'm doing things for you and I'm working for you and I'm sharing things that you want to hear, right. Um, and things you want to learn and things you want to know more about. So anyway, today, anyway, my name is Karen Eiten. I am a life coach, actually, and a, a business coach. So I kind of do both. So I also help people in toxic relationships to get out of toxic relationships. I have another YouTube channel, uh, Karen Eiten, that you can find me on. Um, and we talk about different things about toxic relationships. And I help people to uh, get out of toxic relationships and help them to start building their life again. And to be able to let go of loss of their heartbreak and all of that. And to be able to start attracting who they want, um, you know, later on in the future. After they really do some inner work on themselves and they are able to let go and they're able to set up good boundaries. And they're able to um, see a future for themselves, right? Because when you are heartbroken, it's really hard to look past that, right? You are stuck in that situation and it's really hard to look past that heartache. So that's what I help people with also. And I also help people who want to boost their income in their sewing shops and to be able to start creating more revenue. So I help with different ways to uh, help them to boost their income. You know, if it's maybe selling online or if it's taking in different things, if it's trying different things, maybe setting different price points, um, you know, putting different ads out there. It's just a, a whole, you know, conglomeration of um, things that work, right? So that's what I help, um, you know, sewing shops with. So today, anyway, we're going to be talking about how I ran three alteration shops to boost my income, right? So a long time ago, when I started my business, I was in business for 25 years and I ran three alteration shops at one time. And I'm just going to give you some tips of things that kind of work for me. So they're kind of tips that if you're looking to maybe you know, put a second alteration shop in another location or you're looking to, you know, increase your sales in getting another, you know, maybe satellite alteration shop or something like that. Um, and it also could be a, another type of sewing shop, whatever, you know, it, maybe it's an embroidery shop or whatever your sewing um, expertise is, right? Um, if you're looking to increase, right? You're looking to um, expand your yourself, right? And um, so I'm just going to give you some tips that helped me. So this is from my own personal experience uh, of things that helped me. So one, I had uh, seven part-time employees. So I never paid anybody full-time wage. I had all uh, employees that were either uh, college students or they were just graduating from high school and I would train them. And um, so this is one thing that uh, if you're looking to expand and you need help in your sewing shop, it's always a good thing to reach out to the colleges by you. There may be someone going to college that is interested in your field, maybe interested in the type of work that you do. And you can expand and to kind of get someone in there to help you that is credible, right? So if they're going to college, they're pretty credible. They're pretty dependable. I mean, they have, you know, um, you know, deadlines and all this to meet. So they're used to deadlines. They're used to being given a task and to be able to do it and to handle it. So these are great people to reach out to, 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 you know, you know, ask for help, right? So you can reach out to a college or something like that. So number two is I went to each shop each day. So I drove to each shop each day. One was a little bit further out of my town into another town. 
and I would drive each day about a half an hour to this other location and um, I would go there and I would do all the harder jobs, right? So when I trained my employees for alterations, I trained them to take things apart for me, right? To mark things, to take things apart. Uh, and then I would go there and do the harder things, right? So I didn't have to teach uh, my employees, unless I did later on, uh, to do some of the harder things like shorten collar, like take in, you know, shorten sleeves, take inside, some of the harder things that really have to come out perfectly, right? So um, that's what I would do. And that's what worked for me. You may be, you know, in alteration business and you found a different way that works for you. And that's okay. I'm not saying anybody is wrong. I'm saying that this is just what worked for me. Um, so if you're just starting out, maybe uh, you might want to try, try it that way. Uh, but that's what uh, I did. It was, you know, I taught my employees the easier tasks like pant hems and cuffs and uh, to take in a waist, right? And things like this. Um, so then number three is the employees we train to do things productively. Uh, we did hymns while you wait. That's how we made our bread and butter. That's how we made our money on the weekends. So we have an outlet mall not too far from us. And I did hymns within 30 minutes to an hour. We would get to an hour, sometimes a couple hours, depending on how overloaded we would get on the weekends because people would bring us like 10 pairs of slacks and, you know, the eight pairs of pants and 10 pairs of pants and, you know, all of this on the weekends. And we would do it while they wait. So a lot of our Chicago people would come here to shop at our outlet mall and we would do the hymns while they waited. So we would give them a claim ticket for their gar for their outfit, their garments, or their pants. And they would go and shop for the day. And then they would come back and then pick up their alterations, right? And it worked out great. It worked out really wonderful. So we, they were able to get their pants hemmed. And they were also able to get it done and take it back home with them, right? And just all on a weekend. So they would come here and shop, bring their alterations to me. And we would only do pant hymns on Saturdays and Sundays. So we wouldn't take, we would take in work uh, and mark it. But we wouldn't do anything other than pant hymns while they waited. So we had time to invest in only hymns, right? Well, you're not doing any other type of work that takes time. You're only doing the fast stuff. And we had a blind stitch hemmer. And we would run that thing non stop and uh, we would make a lot of money um, doing pant hymns while people waited so that's how we made the majority of our living that's how we made um, money fast and it worked for us right so then number four is uh, each employee was able to do hemming, and that was the number one thing they had to know how to take apart the old hymns that came in they had to know how to uh, re, uh, you know, press it out and then remark it and cut it uh, for what type of hem that came in. So whatever type of hem came in, that's the type of hem we put on while they waited. So sometimes we had cuffs, sometimes we had plain hems, and sometimes we had jean hems, but that's all we did on pants or slacks or lady slacks, right? And a lot of times the lady slacks, if we would get overloaded and we would have lined lady slacks, we would have them pick up on a different day because it takes time, right? It's nothing you can really rush through. It takes time. So, but we did do some, you know, it just depended on how busy we were, right? Uh, in order to take in some of that little bit of extra stuff. So, and then number five is, um, no, oh, okay. Number five is, um, other work like formal suits and things was a three to seven day wait. Uh, that was our time frame that we had at that time. So we had, you know, if they need their, their sleeves altered, they need a formal hemmed, they needed, you know, whatever it may be, belt loops put on, made and put on, uh, whatever it was that they needed besides the hems, they had a three to seven day wait. So a lot of them would drop it off on the weekend and then they'd say, well, that's fine. I'll be here next weekend and I'll pick it up next weekend. Perfect. It worked for them and it worked for us, right? So then number six 
is I did my own payroll and the employees got paid every week. So I did the payroll for the seven employees and they got paid weekly and they were happy. And I really tried to do my best to give them bonuses when I made money. And I tried to, um, you know, encourage them to learn more and also to uh, move up as they learned more, I would pay them more, right? So if they could take some load off of me, then I would pay them more, right? So it just depends um, you want to make sure that you're getting your your money out of your employees, right? You want to make sure that they are able to produce. They're able to bring in work and get the work back out the door and not spend on all day on one particular garment or one particular task. They have to be able to move their ass. <laughs> Sorry, but it's true, right? We as business owners, we need people that work for us and they're able to produce. They're able to move, you know, products through our sewing shops, right? We have to have that. So then number seven is we had a system that flowed and worked. So our system was, well, someone would come in, we would do the fitting on their pants or their garment. We'd write them an alteration ticket. We would also give them a claim ticket that was for their alterations. And we also had the long alteration tag where it has multiple tickets, right? So if they had more than one slack, you can put another ticket with their slacks. So every single piece of garment that came in always had an alteration ticket attached to it. So we were able to identify what orders go together. So um, that's very important. So we had a system and then we also had a closet system where when we bring in alterations, we have a closet that is for incoming garments only. So we'd have a Monday through Saturday um, tag system in there and we would put it in there the day that it was due. So we'd look up what day it was due. We'd file it in that day. And then we'd always try to work either one to two days ahead of time, right? So we're working one to two days ahead of time on the merchandise. So we're able to make sure that we meet the deadline, right? You don't want to be working on alterations that are due today, right? So I have a ton of alterations in here today that are due for this week, but they're not due until Thursday. So I have today and a little bit of tomorrow early morning to get them done, right? And then I have another load from my, um, my outsourcing stuff that I pick up and um, it is not due until Monday. So I have, you know, a lot of time to work on that as well. So, and then I also have things that I make from scratch for people. And that stuff is due when I get it done, right? So I look, like to work on that. Sometimes I'll work on that a little bit each time that I have a day off. I'll work on stuff that is due um, that doesn't really have a deadline. It is just call me when it's done, right? So we have some of that. So we are always busy. We are always working. We um, always have things to work on, right? So we either have things that are due for tomorrow or we have things that are due sometime this week or next week. Or we also have things that are kind of backlogged where we take it in on a get done basis. They're not in a hurry for it just when we get to it, right? So we take in things like that, that we isn't our normal money making way, but it is work that we can do to make money on when we have time to do it, right? So it all balances out and it all works. So we always have work in here, right? So that's what helps you. It helps you to be able to take things in and to do it in a calm, you know, an orderly fashion and to be able to, um, you know, promise it for different days. So you're not like on this huge stressful, you know, timeline. I used to work that way. I used to be that way and you can do it that way if you want, but I'm not doing it that way anymore. Right. 
And um, I'm going to run it the way I want to run it because um, I'm not going to get stressed out about it, right? Like I used to and made myself half sick and I'm not doing that anymore. So I get things done in a proper, you know, orderly fashion and in a timely manner, but I don't stress over it anymore, right? So that's what you want to do. You want to be able to run your business and to have the lifestyle that you want to have, but you don't want to put your health and yourself through misery doing it right and 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 bust yourself all up right <laughs> and even your health right so i've been there done that and i'm not doing that to myself anymore so um let's see so the number eight in the, our last tip is most of the employees took things apart and did the prep work for garments uh the more skilled they were um you know the more that i would pay them and then the more they were willing to want to learn, you know, was better for them. Then they could take those skills and use those skills and create money for themselves later on or when they went off to college and some gals did, right? And so it just depended on, you know, their situation, how much they wanted to learn and how much they were willing to put into it, right, is what they ended up getting out of it. So, um, so yeah, and that's the way that I did my uh, alteration. So I would start at, um, you know, one shop, and then I'd stay there for about two or three hours. I'd go to the next shop. I'd stay there two or three hours, and then I'd go to the next shop and stay there two or three hours. And I would always... Um, you know, not have a certain routine, you know, so when you have employees, you don't want to be on a certain routine. You're the boss. So you go to what shop you want to go to. So I would mix it up and they never knew if I was coming or not. And it worked for me because I could see who's working, who's slacking and what's going on in my business, right? So you want to be careful when you're the owner of the business and you have employees working for you because soon as the owner leaves, they want to slack. They want to talk to other co-workers. They want to slack. They want to get on the phone. They want to do their life, right? They want to do what they want to do. So as a business owner, you need to be available and you need to be able to to do it your way. You need to be able to show up at a shop um, when you want to. You need to show up at a shop when they're least expecting you and to mix it up a little bit, right? Be the owner also overseeing everything, right? So don't let your employees run you. You run your employees, right? So you want to make sure that you keep it straight that way. And um, to stay in tune with what's really going on in your business, if you have employees, right? So, so yeah, so that's really all that I have to share today. I think it's some helpful hip, hints on if you're planning to run another location, if you're planning to start a, a, a business, and if you would like my help. I am looking for three people that I can work with this month, and I will give you a discount to work with me. And we are going to get your shop up and running the right way. We're going to look at your shop. We're going to invest in your shop and put your time, energy, and money in yourself and in your shop and start making the income that you deserve. I'm looking for three people that I'm going to give a really great deal to uh, to work with me and we're going to really improve your income. So if you'd like to reach out to me, I'd love to talk to you. If you are serious about start hitting your numbers, start making um, some revenue, start making some income and getting really in fine tune with your skills and see what it's what you're really good at and know what your offer is going to be. Maybe you need to change your offer. Maybe you need to really tweak your prices, right? Um, and really go through everything. Uh, maybe your shop setup, maybe your shop setup is off. It's not productive enough, right? So maybe together we can really brainstorm your shop and to start creating the income you deserve. It's starting, it's fall here now, starting to go into winter. This is a great time to, you know, get on board with me and to really start um, working on your shop and on yourself to really be the business owner that you want to be and to really hit 
those numbers that you desire, right? So reach out to me. I'd love to talk to you. Please go ahead and like this uh, video if you like the content that I share here and go ahead and subscribe. I'd love to have you here. Uh, this is a nice little community where we can talk about alterations. You can put a comment below. You can put something below that you would really like to know more about or to learn more about. If it's positive and it has to do with business, nothing else, right? Um, and then go ahead and look for my other channel. If you are in a heartbreak right now or you've gone through divorce and you're looking to, um, you know, get back to your authentic self, to get back to who you really are, who you're meant to be, and to let go of some of that hurt and to be able to move on with your life. And you can also go and check out my website. You can go there and find some programs that are available there. One is how to start a business from scratch, how to do it step by step. The other one is uh, how to start an Etsy shop so you can start creating more income for your sewing shop. So if you're already sewing and you're already running that sewing machine, there may be some things that you can make to sell online on Etsy and to be able to start creating another stream of income. We wanna be able to be self-sufficient and to support ourselves. And having other streams and multiple streams of income is really important for you. It's important for your future. It's important for you to be able to have that cash flow coming in, right? So go ahead and reach out to me. I'd love to help you through uh, the process of really starting to make more money in your alteration shop, sewing shop, um, you could be selling on Etsy, but still need my help. That's a little business that you're already running and you're sewing. That's fine. Any type of a sewing shop um, and you may be embroidery, maybe, um, you know, you sell and make things right at your location. Maybe you'd like to increase that and, you know, boost up your sales by selling online. I can walk you through that process. And um, yeah, so reach out to me. I'd love to help any of you out there and to start you know, being the business owner and start stepping up to the plate, invest in yourself, invest in your uh, business and start creating revenue. Okay. So thanks so much. My website is www.talents2profits.com and you can go there and find that. You can also go there and find uh, ebook there that is for sale for customer service. So if you've been in business for a long time and you need to improve your customer service because you're having things come back or you're having issues with relating to people, um, this book can help you and it is downloadable. You just pay the fee and it's downloadable and you will get your ebook and um, you can go ahead and read through it and really uh, improve your game, right? Improve the way you interact with other people, the way you take in your work and, and you know, and communicate with your clients, okay? So thanks so much for watching. I love all of you. I pray for all of you all the time. Thank you so much to my followers. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.